Using hardware with life should be easy, right? But let's face it, sometimes it's not. How to send MIDI, sync tempo, set up tracks, and finally play and record this blinking box with no latency. Oh wait, it doesn't even blink yet. And besides of those things, I'm about to show you some quick little shortcuts you had no idea exist. Okay, so I'm gonna use two synths, my trusty Peak and Typhoon. I connect them in different ways, but what's even more important, they don't have any keys to play straight away. In my case, Peak is easier to connect. USB cable to send and receive MIDI, two mono audio cables into interface, power this thing on, and yeah, we are still missing the key part. How to play it. There are a couple of things to set up in live MIDI settings. First, track, which lets you send and receive MIDI from live. You may also want to sync your LFOs and effects just to not spend rest of your life trying to tweak rate and time knobs. Take the sync box, but only for the output ports. And for remote, I usually have it on just in case. But it's more useful for controllers and some more advanced stuff. For the Typhoon, I use slightly different settings. They will also match yours if you use an older synth without USB MIDI. Dreadbox can handle it, but it also has a well-known issue with noise ground loop if you use USB both to power this thing up and send MIDI. I simply have this USB cable connected to a basic phone charger under my desk and then this MIDI cable connected straight into my interface MIDI out. Oh and just remember if your audio cables match the color you will get better sound. Trust me, that's 100% true. MIDI settings basically match the ones I showed you for peak, yet MIDI is handled by my audio interface. To play this thing, it's time for the literal godsend device in life. External instrument. Simply drag it on empty MIDI track and change the settings. Let's choose the MIDI output from my interface and the audio from the corresponding input on my interface as well. By the way, it is really handy to just go to input config in your interface in live settings and simply rename stereo inputs or mono inputs for your synths or anything you use. And since we have this MIDI with external instruments selected to record, all you got to do is to just As for the controller, I use my push. You can use anything that has keys as well as different MIDI channels if you use more than one controller, but I like to keep things simple. Okay, but that's just a MIDI track. Sure, you can play, record and playback, but the final thing is to have that sweet audio file to work with. That's where you can stumble upon an issue with latency. There are many great videos that cover it already, but just to sum things up. First, your buffer size and size settings. Try to keep it as low as your system specs allows to. But if you want to be super on the money while recording, instead of creating new audio track to record your synth and then choosing an input from here, go and choose the MIDI track with your external instrument MIDI device on and then choose one of those settings. Depends on what you like. This device automatically compensates for latency, so all you got to do is to go to your audio track, switch monitoring to off, just to not hear the signal twice, and press record. If your tracks are still noticeably off, then I will leave some videos in the description that will probably solve your issue. Now for the circuits. Obviously, you can save those external instruments as presets, so rename them for your synth or anything you use, but to level up this thing even more. I could follow my previous recommendation, track presets, but to be fair with you, it started to act a little bit weird after 12.2 update. I was so used to the quick setup and while I was looking for solutions, I came across an app for Mac called Keyboard Maestro. It lets you set custom macros for different applications and that's why when I press bracket and N, then the magic happens. And now straight away, once I change some presets, 
I can play my innovation pick. I don't want to make this video too long, so let me know if you want the exact setup. It simply creates MIDI, then audio track, renames them and applies my saved external instrument preset to a MIDI track. It also colors everything automatically, but that's due to the Max for Life device called Auto Track Colors. And now since we have everything set up, let's quickly create a patch on Typhon while using the new version of Stink Max for Life device. I know it has a built-in sequencer, but I really want to test it Stink. So this little thing have a very interesting approach to setting up waves because that's actually two oscillator synths, but you change the oscillators by just tweaking this one knob. Two saw waves. Square and saw. Square and triangle. And then my favorite part, add some cool effects. And probably the coolest effect of them all, a cloud granular delay. Of course, since we have everything synced, I can go straight into sync options and then sync this cloud delay to BPM. Now, if you ask me, both the sound and functionality makes this budget synth a game changer, especially for that price. I don't know how it is now because I got it like four months ago. So, you know, tariffs and all that stuff. But once again, I don't want to make this video too long. So let me know if you want to watch a full review of all the good features and stuff in it and maybe some of its downsides. It might be something like the one I did for much more expensive synth.